Hi, I'm Lucy. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about my story. It's a roller coaster. Trust me. The sun was setting, casting a warm glow over my small apartment in the heart of the city. I was there, standing amidst a whirlwind of wedding plans, with my heart full of excitement and dreams. My wedding was just around the corner, and everything seemed perfect. My fiancé, Mark, was the kind of guy you read about in fairy tales, and my family, well, they were my rock, especially my brother Jake and his wife Emily. We were close, like finish each other's sentences close. I always admired Emily. She was confident, successful, and seemed genuinely supportive of me. That evening, Emily dropped by, saying she had something special for me. Her smile was as wide as the horizon, but her eyes, I noticed, held a flicker of something I couldn't quite place. Anxiety? Excitement? I shrugged it off. I've got the perfect addition for your wedding dress, she said, holding up a delicate vintage lace veil. It was beautiful, and I was touched. As she left, she hugged me tightly, whispering, You're going to be the most beautiful bride. I believed her. But the next day, my world turned upside down. I decided to try on my wedding dress one last time before the big day. It was a family heirloom, passed down from my grandmother. The dress held generations of love and hope, and I was the next in line to honor that legacy. Rushing to my closet, I stopped dead in my tracks. There, on the floor, lay my dress or what was left of it. Torn to pieces, the fabric shredded, lace ripped apart. My heart sank to the depths of despair. Who could do something so cruel? Through my tears, I remembered the hidden camera I had installed a few weeks back, meant to capture candid moments of my wedding prep. With trembling fingers, I played back the footage, and there she was, Emily, her face twisted in a sneer, her hands viciously tearing through the fabric of my dress. The same Emily who had smiled at me just hours ago. I couldn't believe it. Why would she do this? I had to know. The next day, I invited Emily over for coffee, trying to keep my voice steady. As she walked in, all smiles and warmth, my stomach churned. I need to ask you something, Emily. It's important. Her smile faltered for a fraction of a second. Sure. Anything. It's about my wedding dress. It was torn apart. I don't know how it happened. Emily's face was a picture of concern. That's awful, Lucy. Do you think someone broke in? The lie tasted bitter in her mouth, and my heart raced. I pulled out my phone, showing her the footage. Her face drained of color. That's not what it looks like, she stammered. I was... I was trying to fix a tear. It got out of hand. But why didn't you tell me? I panicked, Lucy. I didn't want to upset you. Her words were like daggers. Betrayal from a stranger would have hurt less. I need some time, Emily, I said, my voice barely a whisper. As she left, a part of me left with her. The trust, the bond we had, it was shattered just like the remnants of my dress. Heartbroken and betrayed, I sat there, trying to piece together not just my dress, but my faith in those closest to me. How could I move forward from this? How do you mend a bond that's been torn apart so viciously? This was just the beginning, and little did I know, the path ahead was going to be one hell of a journey. After the wedding dress incident, I was a wreck. But the shock and hurt quickly turned into a burning need to understand why. Why would Emily do this to me? I couldn't just let it go. I needed answers. I started digging deeper, talking to family members, friends, anyone who might have insight into Emily's actions. And oh, the things I discovered. At a family dinner, I subtly brought up Emily in a conversation with my Aunt Carol. Emily always seems so perfect, doesn't she? A bit too perfect. Aunt Carol hesitated, then leaned in closer. Lucy, there's something off about her. She always needs to be the center of attention. The pieces started falling into place. One day, I was having coffee with my cousin Rachel, who used to be close with Emily. I noticed you and Emily don't hang out much anymore. What happened? Rachel sighed, stirring her coffee nervously. Emily? She's manipulative, Lucy. She twisted my words once, made it look like I was gossiping about you, caused a huge rift in our family. My heart sank. This wasn't just about a dress. It was a pattern of jealousy and manipulation. As I gathered these stories, I realized confronting Emily wouldn't be enough. She'd just deny everything or twist it to her advantage. No, I needed something more concrete, something undeniable. I decided to set up a small get-together, 
a pretext to observe Emily and record her interactions. I invited my closest family members, including Emily and Jake. The day of the get-together arrived. I had cameras discreetly placed around my living room. Everyone was chatting, laughing, oblivious to my hidden agenda. I kept a close eye on Emily, trying to appear normal, but my nerves were frayed. Emily was in her element, charming and vivacious, but I noticed how she subtly put down my cousin Sarah, who had recently landed a big job promotion. Sarah, it's amazing how you got that promotion. Though, we all know it's not what you know, but who you know, right? Sarah looked taken aback, unsure how to respond. My heart pounded. This was the Emily I needed everyone to see. As the evening went on, Emily's true colors began to show more and more. Each sly comment, each backhanded compliment, was caught on camera. Later, after everyone left, I reviewed the footage. It was all there. The condescending tones, the subtle digs. It was the evidence I needed, but watching it made my stomach churn. How could someone be so cruel, and yet so loved by everyone? I knew then that legal punishment wasn't what I wanted for Emily. It wouldn't change her, or undo the hurt she caused. I wanted her to face the consequences of her actions, in a way that would hit her where it hurt the most. Her reputation. Her image. I started planning. It had to be public, undeniable, and it had to come from her own actions. I wouldn't need to say a word. Emily would undo herself. With all the dirt I had on Emily, I was ready to set my plan into motion. I knew I had to be smart about this. I couldn't just come out and accuse her. That'd be my word against hers. I needed to show everyone exactly who Emily really was. I decided to throw a family reconciliation party. I wanted everyone to think I was trying to mend fences, especially Emily. I sent out the invites, making sure to emphasize how much I wanted to move past all the misunderstandings. Emily ate it up, replying with a message full of fake enthusiasm and love. The day of the party, my apartment was buzzing with relatives, chatting and laughing. The air was filled with the aroma of baked lasagna and sweet apple pie, a perfect setup for a cozy family evening. I greeted everyone with a forced smile, playing the gracious host. All the while, my heart was racing. Today was the day Emily would be unmasked. As everyone settled in with their drinks, I announced that I had prepared a special video montage to celebrate our family. Eyes turned to the TV screen, everyone expecting a cheesy compilation of childhood photos and happy family moments. The video started just like that, with smiles and laughter. Emily sat there, looking pleased as punch, probably thinking she had gotten away with everything. But as the video played on, the tone shifted. I had edited it carefully, inserting clips of Emily's not-so-pleasant moments that I'd gathered. There she was, giving backhanded compliments to Sarah about her job, making snide remarks about Aunt Carol's homemade dress, and several other small yet revealing incidents. The room grew quieter with each clip. I watched the family's faces change from amusement to confusion, and then to discomfort. Emily's face was a picture. She knew something was up but couldn't quite grasp it yet. Finally, the climax the footage of Emily destroying my wedding dress. The room fell into a stunned silence. The video ended, and all eyes were on Emily. Emily, care to explain? I asked, my voice calm but loud enough to cut through the tension. She stammered, her face going from red to pale. That's not... It's out of context. Aunt Carol stood up, anger flashing in her eyes. Out of context? You were tearing up her dress. Emily's defense crumbled under the weight of her own actions displayed for all to see. She started crying, saying how sorry she was, how she never meant for any of this to happen. But her words fell on deaf ears. The family was in shock. Emily, once the golden girl, was now exposed as the person she truly was. The mask had fallen, and beneath it was a face twisted by jealousy and spite. I felt a mix of triumph and sadness. I didn't enjoy bringing Emily down, but she needed to face the consequences of her actions. As everyone started to process what they had just seen, I knew that Emily's reign of subtle tyranny was over. The room was thick with tension after the video. Emily looked around panicked and cornered. My family's faces were etched with disbelief and anger. Emily, how could you? My brother Jake broke the silence, his voice shaking with a mixture of anger and pain. Lucy is your family. Why would you do this to her? Emily tried to speak, her voice barely above a whisper. I didn't mean... It just happened. 
happened. You tore her wedding dress, Emily. Aunt Carol's voice was sharp. And all those things you said about everyone. How could you be so two-faced? The conversation erupted around the room, everyone's pent-up feelings about Emily spilling out. All the little doubts and hurts she had inflicted over the years were finally brought to light. You need to leave, Emily, said Uncle Bill, his voice firm and decisive. This isn't something we can just brush under the carpet. Emily looked at each of us, tears streaming down her face, but nobody moved to comfort her. She had crossed a line that couldn't be uncrossed. She left my apartment in a flood of tears, the door closing behind her like the final chapter of a book. The aftermath of the revelation was a mix of relief and sadness. My family apologized for not seeing Emily's true nature sooner, and I reassured them it wasn't their fault. As for me, I felt a strange sense of peace. Exposing Emily had been hard, but it was necessary. I had stood up for myself, and in doing so, I found a strength I didn't know I had. In the weeks that followed, Emily's world unraveled. Her toxic behavior became known in her social circles and workplace. It wasn't long before she lost her job. Rumors said it was due to her attitude and the trust she'd broken. I heard from mutual friends that Emily was struggling to maintain any of her relationships. Her mask had slipped, and people saw her for who she really was. It was a harsh reality, but one she had brought upon herself. Meanwhile, I started to rebuild my life, finding comfort in the support of my loved ones. I began to trust my judgment again, learning to let go of the hurt and betrayal. I realized that no matter what life throws at me, I have the resilience to come out stronger. I decided to have a small, intimate wedding with a new dress. It wasn't the heirloom I had dreamed of wearing, but it symbolized a new beginning, a fresh start free from the shadows of the past. That day, surrounded by the people who truly loved and supported me, I realized how far I had come. I was no longer the same person who had stood in shock over a torn dress. I had grown, become stronger, and more confident in myself. After everything that happened, I found myself standing in a small, charming chapel, surrounded by the people who truly mattered in my life. My new dress, simple yet elegant, symbolized more than just a fresh start. It was a testament to my resilience and growth. Lucy, you look absolutely stunning, Mark whispered to me, his eyes brimming with love. Today marks the beginning of our forever. The ceremony was intimate, filled with genuine smiles and heartfelt vows. As I looked into Mark's eyes, promising to stand by him through thick and thin, I felt a wave of contentment wash over me. After the ceremony, we gathered for a small reception. The air was light, filled with laughter and music. Aunt Carol came over, her eyes sparkling with joy. Lucy, you've grown so much through all of this. We're all so proud of you. I smiled, squeezing her hand. Thank you, Aunt Carol. I couldn't have done it without all of you. As the evening went on, I took a moment to step outside, gazing at the starlit sky. The cool breeze felt refreshing, and I closed my eyes, taking in the peace of the moment. Rachel joined me, her presence comforting. You know, Lucy, what you did? It took a lot of courage. I nodded. It wasn't easy, but I had to stand up for myself. I feel like I've finally closed a painful chapter in my life. We stood there for a while, just enjoying the tranquility. The night was a beautiful ending to a turbulent period in my life. Back inside, I made my way to Mark. He wrapped his arm around me, and we swayed gently to the music. I'm so glad we're here together. After all the chaos, this feels like a dream. Mark kissed my forehead. You're my dream come true, Lucy. As the night drew to a close, I felt a sense of profound gratitude. I realized that this journey wasn't just about overcoming betrayal. It was about recognizing and appreciating the people who stood by me, those who truly cared. I learned that while I can't control what others do, I have the power to rise above it, to become stronger and more resilient. Life is unpredictable, but it's also full of new beginnings and opportunities for growth. Standing there, surrounded by love and support, I looked forward to my future with Mark, filled with hope and excitement for what lay ahead. This chapter of my life might have ended, but a new one is just beginning. As the reception came to a gentle close, the soft glow of the fairy lights created a magical atmosphere. I stood there, in the middle of friends and family, feeling a profound sense of completeness. The journey here wasn't easy, but it shaped me into who I am today. This is just the beginning, Lucy, Mark said, holding my hand. We have a whole lifetime of adventures ahead of us. I smiled, 
looking into his eyes, full of love and promise. With you by my side, I feel like I can face anything. Today isn't just about our love. It's about moving forward, stronger and more united than ever. We stepped outside into the cool night, ready to leave for our honeymoon. The stars twinkled above, like a promise of new beginnings and endless possibilities. As I looked back at the chapel one last time, a sense of peace washed over me. The challenges I faced, the betrayal, the pain, all led me to this moment. I realized that life is a tapestry of experiences, each thread contributing to the strength and beauty of the whole. Driving away, with the soft sound of the night around us, I felt a deep gratitude for everything that had happened. The good, the bad, it all played a part in bringing me here. Life is unpredictable, often challenging, but always moving forward. I learned that the true strength lies in resilience, in the ability to stand back up, no matter how hard you fall. As we journeyed into the night, heading towards new horizons, I knew that this was just the start of many more stories to come. Stories of love, of growth, and of the unbreakable human spirit. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Remember, no matter what life throws at you, there's always a path to a new beginning. Don't forget to subscribe for more stories of hope and resilience. Until next time, keep moving forward. And that's the end of Lucy's story. Do you think exposing someone's true nature publicly is the best way to handle betrayal? Or are there better ways to seek justice? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more thought-provoking stories.